Hello, and thank you for attending this lecture online. This is made for you who requested to see this uh, lecture, but couldn't uh, physically come to the college. So here it is. Uh, so I'm Christopher Engdahl, and I'm a PhD researcher in uh, choreography at Georgetown College of Arts in the UK. I'm researching about how to create choreography by reproducing pre-existing choreographies. In other words, using other choreographers' work as a starting point for one's own creation. And this is what I want to talk to you about today. I see an importance in considering identity politics while discussing how choreographic material is generated. And I see a value in uh, acknowledging that one does not create in isolation, that one does not generate choreography outside of one's cultural history and uh, context. Here I want to introduce a theorist, or discuss a theorist, Judith Butler. She discusses identity politics, critiquing the body as a pre-existing essence outside of culture. So she reacts against the notion of the body and the subject as existing before its expression, what she calls pre-discursive. She claims that there is no doer behind the deed. So there's no person who is free to act, who is then adjusted by its surrounding. There's no person who is unbound from culture. Butler argues that the act, what we do, is what constitutes and creates the body and the subject. So a person is not merely stained by culture, but rather made by and constituted through culture. This can be discussed in relation to the postmodern notion that everything is already done, that we can never do anything new, we can only repeat what has come before us. And Butler, she would agree on this, that we constantly repeat norms and values of the past, but she also says that each time we repeat, uh, each time we reproduce, we engage in a new act. Providing the possibility of repeating differently. And there one finds an agency. Butler argues that when we act, when we do something, our doing is just a constant repetition or reiteration as she calls it, and that that reiteration has no defined origin. So there's no single origin that can be said to have started this process of repeating. There's no single origin that stands before this forever continuous redoing. And this leads me to my argument that choreographic production is an act of constant reusing, of continuous reframing of material, and that this material has no single defined origin. And I will now show you some uh, examples of this activity within the choreographic field, starting with uh, Sharon Bell's The Last Performance from 1998. Uh, Bell is in this piece concerned with the notions of originality and presence. The piece is performed by four dancers and at one point during the piece that I will now show you, the dancers perform a dance originally choreographed and danced by Susanne Linke herself, or by Susanne Linke. And um, each of the dancers introduces him or herself by announcing through a microphone as being this Susanne Linke. 
then one after the other they dance the phrase. Ich bin Susanne Linke. Ich bin Susanne Linke. So, and then he continues dancing his own version of the choreography. And here is a photograph of the original version by Susanne Linke herself. In the last performance, the dance is positioned in this constant relocating that I was talking about accepting a continuous reusing and reframing of movement material as part of its structure. The dance leaves the original choreographer. It moves away from the bond of the single exclusive choreographic original. But the last performance merely suggests and uh, demonstrates this approach, but it doesn't do what it suggests. In fact, it even preserves a somewhat naive connection to the original, pointing every dancer and their versions back to the original and strengthens its authenticity, highlighting the original that is Susanne Linke. It risks suggesting a body that is conceived as prior to the reiteration, as standing before the repeating process that Butler was talking about. <laughs> 